Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you the 25 nonfiction books that I've picked up recently. I want to start off by showing you all the nonfiction books about books that I've picked up, mainly just because I think they're fun and I think it will be fun to start there. So the first book I picked up is called Bleaker House, Chasing My Novel to the End of the World by Nell Stevens. This is by the author of Me and Mrs. Gaskell or The Victorian and the Romantic as it's known here in the States. This book is apparently part memoir, part travel writing and part short stories as the author talks about three months of her life that she spent in basically total isolation in the Falklands. She was attempting to write 2,500 words of her novel per day. This sounds very unique. I am very much looking forward to seeing how I react to this one. Next up is Can You Ever Forgive Me? Memoirs of a Literary Forger. This is novelist Lee Israel's memoir in which she discusses how she forged letters and autographs of famous authors in order to earn herself some money. She went and sold the things that were not real that she had forged. And she ended up being the target of an FBI investigation because of that fact. This story was turned into a movie starring Melissa McCarthy as the cover implies. I have seen that movie, but like the true book nerd that I am, I want to read the book for myself. Then I picked up Jane on the Brain, Exploring the Science of Social Intelligence with Jane Austen by Wendy Jones. From what I understand about this book, it seems to be a breakdown of the social intelligence of Jane Austen's characters and talks about just how realistic all of them are. I have now read all six of Jane Austen's novels. It took me a few years, but I made my my way through all of them. And more than one of her characters has inspired a psychology of literary heroines video here on my channel. So needless to say, I'm very excited about this one. But to introduce a little bit more drama into this books about books section, I also picked up The Feud, Vladimir Nabokov, Edmund Wilson, and The End of a Beautiful Friendship by Alex Beam. This is the story of author Vladimir Nabokov and his mentor, Edmund Wilson. The two of them were very good friends. They were very close until Nabokov published Lolita. And when Nabokov started getting more attention than his mentor, Wilson wasn't very happy about that. He actually attacked Nabokov's work in the New York Times review of books. Nabokov countered, and this whole big feud began. I love nonfiction books about writers, but I also love some good drama. I'm not ashamed to admit that. So this seemed like the best of both worlds. The next book I picked up is called Unfinished Business, Notes of a Chronic Rereader by Vivian Gornick. This book was published last year, and it is all about a cherished pastime of basically all readers, which is rereading. I actually reread my all-time favorite book every single June, so I'm considering picking this book up around the same time that I do that this year. I also got my own copy of Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Caroline Frazier. This is, of course, a biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder, who's the author of the Little House on the Prairie books. Last year, I read the new Sylvia Plath biography called Red Comet. I absolutely fell in love with it. It was one of my favorite nonfiction books of the entire year, and it definitely renewed my interest in reading biographies, specifically biographies of female literary figures. I had heard amazing things about this one, so this seemed like a good one to move on to next. This next book I want to show you is one that I got as a gift from the wonderful Andrea from Infinite Text. She sent this book to me out of the blue. It was such a nice surprise. That book is Shakespeare's Tremor and Orwell's Cough, Diagnosing the Medical Groans and Last Gasps of Ten Great Writers by John J. Ross. Now, if you don't know my book taste and you don't know Andrea's book taste and you don't know that we're friends, this may seem like an odd gift, maybe even like a thinly veiled threat, but have no fear. I'm actually really excited to read this book because both Andrea and I share an interest in books about death and medicine. We're just kind of weird like that. We've buddy read a book like that in the past and we had a great time doing it. This is, of course, about 10 writers and their ailments, and it's written by a doctor who's attempting to diagnose them. It does sound so weird to say that I'm excited to read a book like this, but I actually am. So thank you, Andrea. But another medical book that I picked up for myself is called When Death Becomes Life, Notes from a Transplant Surgeon by Joshua D. Mesrich. I feel like this is one of those nonfiction books where the subtitle tells you everything you need to know about what's inside. This is the memoir of a transplant surgeon. And given that I'm very interested in transplants and what doctors have to say about what they do, I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. 
But I will say I'm not a big fan of the title of this book. It is very obviously a play off of When Breath Becomes Air, which is another book that I have read and really enjoyed. I always think it's kind of strange when books very obviously try to capitalize off of the success of a previous book, but I feel like this book trying to capitalize off of the success of that kind of a book, I find it to be tacky. I'm obviously willing to give the book a try. I picked it up after all, but I'm going in with an eyebrow raised. Now, if you've been around my channel for the past six or seven months, you may have heard me talk about the fact that I'm reviewing sports books for the Christian Science Monitor. I have been absolutely loving it, and it has really been motivating me to pick up more books in the backlist about sports. So I asked for a few for Christmas, and my mom got me Women in Sports. This is an illustrated book that contains many biographies of a number of different women who achieved excellence in their respect respective sports. Similar to that, I also picked up Women Who Try by Alicia DeFabio. This is all about a middle-aged woman who decides that she wants to try to compete in a triathlon. Another book on this same subject of women in sports is Nike is a Goddess. This is a more general history of women in sports, and it's broken down by sports. It was published in 1998, so I'm sure it's outdated, but I do think it'll give me some good fundamental knowledge. There are a lot of books on women in sports, in this haul, apparently, because the next book I want to show you is Revolutions, How Women Changed the World on Two Wheels by Hannah Ross. This is a history of women in cycling. I'm pretty sure I first heard about this one on Instagram. And the last sports-related book in this haul is Fox Tossing and Other Forgotten and Dangerous Sports Pastimes and Games by Edward Brooke Hitching. This book is all about strange and often cruel sports and games that used to be played, used to be practiced, but are no longer. I, for one, am very happy that fox tossing is no longer a sport, especially because I love foxes. And I feel that's somewhat proven by the fact that I bought this next book, The Hidden World of the Fox by Adele Brand. This is a natural history of the sly, mischievous, but also gorgeous fox, and it was written by a mammal ecologist. Moving on to some other nature books that I picked up, I also got Nature Underfoot by John Haynes. My friend Steve Donahue, who reads basically every book that's released. He called this book his number one favorite nature book of 2020. I really trust Steve's judgment. So if he says that a book about the tiny life forms that live around us is good, then I listen and I pick it up for myself. This next nature book came to my attention when it was long listed for the Wainwright Prize, which is a nature writing prize out of the UK. That book is called Surfacing by Kathleen Jamie. This is an essay collection in which the author travels to archaeological sites, but she also digs into her own memories and her own family's history. This sounds like exactly my kind of thing. Another memoir that I picked up is called Homing Instincts, Early Motherhood on a Midwestern Farm by Sarah Menkadik. This is a memoir in which the author, who was previously a world traveler, decided to settle down on her family's Ohio farm when she was getting ready to become a mother. And another author who wrote about returning home to rural Ohio is David Giffels in his book Furnishing Eternity. In this memoir, he writes about working with his father in a workshop after the unexpected death of his mother and and then very shortly thereafter, the death of his best friend. Ever since I read Every Tool's a Hammer by Adam Savage and Hammerhead by Nina McLaughlin, I have been craving more books about the act of physical creation. And it seems like this is a mixture of that and also a grief memoir. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. Next up, I picked up a work of history called Smoketown by Mark Whitaker. This is a book all about the Black community in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania between 1920 and 1950. I also found a used copy of Digital Gold by Nathaniel Popper. This is the story of the creation of Bitcoin, which is a digital currency. I definitely know of Bitcoin because I'm married to a software engineer, but I definitely don't know as much about it as I would like to. So I'm hoping this book proves to be both informative, but also entertaining. Now, out of all of the books in this haul, this next one might be the one I am the most excited about. It's called Walk This Way by Jeff Edgers. This is the story of how the 1986 Run DMC and Aerosmith collaboration came to be. I have been so into books about music lately. I don't know why, but that's like all 
all I want to read these days. So I cannot wait to get to this one. Next up is a memoir that's at least partially about music. It's called The Encore, a memoir in three acts by Charity Tilleman Dick. This is the memoir of an opera singer who had to undergo not one, but two double lung transplants in order to save her life. After each of those surgeries, she had to learn how to eat, drink, not to mention sing, all over again, but she did end up doubling the time that doctors originally gave her to live. However, she did unfortunately end up passing away in 2019. I'm sure it will be sad going into this memoir with that knowledge, but I am very much looking forward to reading her story. The next book I want to show you is called Legendary Children, The First Decade of RuPaul's Drag Race and The Last Century of Queer Life by Tom Fitzgerald and Lorenzo Marquez. This book uses the hit show RuPaul's Drag Race as a touchstone to discuss queer history and culture. I have become a really big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race over the past year or two, and I cannot wait to learn more. The penultimate book in this haul is an older book that I just couldn't resist picking up. It is also incredibly shiny. It's called Lipstick, a celebration of the world's favorite cosmetic by Jessica Pallingston. If you've seen many of my videos in the past, then you will have probably noticed that I love my lipstick. And this is a book all about lipstick and all about the people who love it, like myself. I know that this is going to be incredibly outdated and it probably contains a whole lot of nonsense, but I don't know. I kind of want to find a fun way to review this one. And the final book in this haul is another very colorful one. And it's one that I absolutely had to pick up after I heard so many positive things about it. It's called The Flavor Thesaurus by Nikki Segnet. From what I hear, this is a book that breaks down, discusses basically every ingredient you can imagine on earth. And it also talks about different flavor combinations. And then at the same time, I've heard that it's really well written and funny. I love to cook as that literary dinner party video I recently put up might indicate. So I think this is going to be a great resource, but I also think it's going to be just a really fun read. So those are all the nonfiction books that I've picked up over the past few months. If you have read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of these books, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading right now, you can find me across social media. The links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.